So, have you been on a cruise lately? Cruise lines continue to transform their ships, making them more high-tech and equipped with the newest gadgets and coolest gizmos. But there is another thing they keep doing, and that's cutting their ships in half. Now why on earth would they do that? Well, think about it. The biggest cruise ship in the world, Symphony of the Seas, weighs more than 15 Brooklyn bridges. It's almost as long as the Empire State Building is tall. How about those for crazy comparisons? Like many other modern cruise ships, Symphony of the Seas offers its guests tons of entertainment, from playing glow-in-the-dark laser tag to plunging from 10-story high water slides. Strip malls, concerts, performances, climbing walls, swimming pools, countless restaurants… In short, a cruise liner is like a little city on the water. Which makes me wonder, what does it take to build this monster of a ship? And how does such a massive hunk of metal stay afloat? Well, like planes, trains, and other engineering feats, a cruise liner is a mega-complicated construction. It almost resembles a giant floating tube. Its walls, unlike in most buildings you see, are part of the ship's structure. All the tiniest details have to be considered. For example, the fact that cutting holes in this huge tube can weaken the whole thing. Obviously, cruise ships are constructed on land and then moved to the water. But here's the surprising bit. Some sections are built upside down. You see, it's easier for workers to weld plates of steel in a downward direction rather than facing the sun. When all the separated blocks are completed, they get flipped over and connected. Cabins and other interior parts are built elsewhere and then put inside the ship like massive Legos. Cruise liners also have tons of restrictions when it comes to the materials used in their construction. For example, you won't see any wooden parts on a ship because this material burns quickly and easily, unlike metals and ceramics. Now, it doesn't mean designers don't try to make ships as light as possible. Remember the floating issue? They put into use the most modern and durable materials. The higher up the ship, the lighter the materials must be to keep the whole construction balanced and prevent it from toppling over. Oh, by the way, all the pools being at the top of the ship, not ideal. So, if the process of creating a cruise ship is so complicated, then perhaps cutting the vessel in half has something to do with this process. Seems to me kind of drastic for a 50% off cruise sale, you think? Eh, not really. The first idea that comes to mind when you see sparks flying and workers making cuts in a ship's hull, the vessels come to the end of its long, fruitful life. Now its parts will be taken apart and recycled. End of story. The theory makes sense, but what's happening is completely the opposite. First, a ship is cut in two and the halves are pulled apart. Now imagine unsnapping two Lego pieces and inserting one more block in between. That's exactly what's happening to a vessel. It's getting a new addition in the middle. The process I'm talking about is called stretching, just like with limos. And it serves several purposes. For one, a new addition will make the vessel larger, more spacious, and more luxurious. Usually, after the stretching, a ship gets new cabins and suites and other modern features, such as new pools, gyms, and yoga studios. It makes the ship's capacity bigger and cruise prices higher. Hey, gotta pay for those new luxuries! The stretching adds about 20 more years to the ship's already long lifespan. If you want to build a new cruise ship, it'll take almost a year. Adding a new part is way faster, several months, and a modernized ship is in service again. While the ship has its innards open, its outdated equipment can be replaced with a new one that's more energy and fuel efficient. It means not only better functioning engines, but also fewer repairs and less maintenance. And the best thing? When a rejuvenated, sleeker ship leaves the yard, it doesn't even have scars. That's how carefully its parts are welded back together. Stretching isn't the only way cruise ships are improved nowadays. They keep getting cooler, all thanks to modern technologies. If you've ever been on a big liner sea cruise, then you know how difficult it can be to find your way around a 15-deck ship, especially on your first day. Unless you're on a ship equipped with interactive maps, you indicate where you want to go and the map shows the fastest way to get to this place from your current location. Some super advanced liners even have robots that provide passengers with the information they need and help those who get lost. On board a high-tech ship, 
there's no need to worry about losing your wallet. The wristband given to you on the first day will serve as your credit card. What's even better, as soon as a staff member registers your bracelet, they'll immediately know your name and first language. It's bound to take service to the next level. And how uncomfortable can it be to have your ID card room key on you at all times? Like when you're at the pool. Well, on plenty of modern cruises, you don't have to carry that thing around anymore. These days, all you need is that wristband. This bracelet works with a special app, so you can order food and drinks or unlock your cabin door as you come close. In total, the thing has more than 100 smart features. Lots of big cruise lines have smartphone apps that allow you to make dinner reservations from wherever you are, if you're a passenger, that is. If using an app doesn't seem exciting enough, you may try to figure out if your liner has a tablet station. If so, you can use an interactive screen for personal reservations. Some high-tech cruises may have more than 100 such screens. Several clicks, one swipe of your wristband, and you've booked a table, theater, spa, or some other form of entertainment. After that, it automatically appears on your agenda. And now, are you ready to see what cruises might look like in the nearest future? Your cabin's likely to have a bit of outside appeal right inside. Its walls will be streaming ocean views. To check the weather, you won't have to go to the promenade. Your cabin ceiling will show you what the skies look like at this very moment. Your cabin will also have a sunrise alarm, and you'll be able to choose the one to your liking, from the time it should wake you up to your favorite sky color. Your meals also promise to be something else. Special high-tech headsets will turn a good old dinner into an experience that combines virtual and augmented reality. Visually emerged in new, exciting surroundings, you might find your food more flavorful. If not, such a meal will still stick in your mind. New technologies will allow you a sneak peek at some off-limit areas, like the captain's quarters. You'll be able to use the same app for virtual shore excursions. Cruise ships of the nearest future won't have such a negative impact on the environment. More and more cruise lines may start to use air lubrication. In other words, ships' hulls will be covered with billions of tiny air bubbles. It will reduce drag, that's the force that slows a ship down, and water resistance. Thanks to this innovation, cruise ships will need less fuel. And less fuel means less pollution. Cruise ships might become even bigger than they are nowadays. Some of them may even turn into floating cities with parks and stadiums. And who knows, maybe one day, you'll see a ship with several airplane runways. No, that would be weird. The new cruise ship's shape may change as well. More of its hull is likely to go underwater, and huge panoramic windows will let passengers admire the beauty of the marine world. Lower decks might feature special platforms for water sports, like water skiing or kayaking. You aren't likely to see human baristas on future cruise ships. They'll be completely replaced by robots. Food is also likely to be prepared by robo-chefs. All cruise ships will have not only onboard drone airports, but also drone docks on passengers' balconies. Bigger drones will deliver supplies to the ship, and smaller ones will be used for picking up and delivering laundry, bringing your online shopping orders, and delivering food and flowers. Plus, you'll be able to order a drone equipped with a camera to capture your excursions or other experiences. Hey, I could just drone on and on. All cabins will be equipped with sleep optimizers that will adjust different features so you can have the best sleep of your life. This technology will control oxygen and vibration levels, sound, smells, light, and maintain a comfortable temperature in your cabin. What will they come up with next? Well, whatever it is, you'll probably see it right here.